be argued that Melbourne is the greatest golf destination on the planet. There's not too many cities around the world where within 20 kilometers of the CBD, you've got eight globally renowned golf courses in the sand belt. And if it's more than golf that you're after, food, wine, craft beer, shopping, art, sport, it's all right here at your doorstep. And coffee, coffee, come with me. It was only a few years ago that the notion of a culture being centered around a non-alcoholic beverage was pretty much ludicrous. Well, that myth has been absolutely smashed, but the benchmark is right here in Melbourne. You can wander any street, any laneway across any suburb around the city of Melbourne. You're guaranteed to find an electric atmosphere that really can't be replicated anywhere else in the world. Like any major city, Melbourne has a multitude of accommodation options, but one of the finest is the five-star Crown Metropole. It possesses contemporary luxury and bold design in an idyllic location. You're within walking distance of the CBD and iconic sporting locations. And after a long day on the links, make sure you head to the rooftop infinity pool and take in the spectacular views of this amazing city. I referenced the eight golf courses here in the Sandbelt region of Melbourne and everybody is familiar with the Big Four or the Grand Slam as they like to call it. Royal Melbourne, Metropolitan, Kingston Heath and Victoria. But with the changes that Tom Doak has made here at Yarra Yarra, the profile of this place is certain to be raised big time in the coming years. And really nowhere better epitomizes the beauty of these changes more than the approach here at the second with the clubhouse and that beautiful vista framed in the background. When we look at the golf clubs in, and golf courses in the sand belt, they're all built in the golden era of golf course design. And it's only till recently that the golfing industry and fraternity have realised just how good that era was. And we were built in 1928 um, by Alec Russell. We're sitting in Alec Russell's room at the moment. Um, he was Alistair McKenzie's Australian partner um, and built Royal Melbourne East, like Karen up over in Perth and, and Parapram Beach over in Wellington. So we're in a very good ilk here and it's only until recently we, we discovered that and just how special this place is. It's definitely a global um, place to visit. You know, we, we do have a lot of people coming down the eastern seaboard of Australia. Uh, we have quite a few reciprocal clubs over in New, in New Zealand also. Um, but we do get quite a lot now coming from the US, UK, um, and in particular Asia. It's the number one golf course in Australia. It's the number six golf course in the world. It's the only golf course outside of the US to have hosted more than one President's Cup. Royal Melbourne really is king of the castle. The Royal Melbourne Golf Club has really stood the test of time. Both the east course and the west course measure just over 6,000 metres. And short par fours feature prominently on all of the sand belt layouts. And one of the best of those short par fours is the third hole here at Royal Melbourne West, which when you're watching tournaments such as the President's Cup, it's actually the first hole. So it has golfers on their toes from the get go. Now, the strategy required to play a hole like this, you can take an iron from the tee and you've got plenty of room to hit the ball on the fairway up there and there's not as much trouble around. But you lay up with an iron, that's gonna leave you a wedge shot to the green with the putting surface unusually sloping away from the player. I like to play aggressively, so I'm gonna have a crack. Obviously, I'm very pleased with this tee shot. I've almost driven the green here on the par four. Reward has outweighed risk on this occasion. And at the end of the day, strategy, it's what Sandbelt Golf is all about. Royal Melbourne, there's a good reason it's globally revered. Now let me take you to a place that's really making waves in the Australian golf landscape.
Like, you've designed golf courses all over the world, but this really is your baby, isn't it? Probably the best bit of land, maybe outside of Royal Melbourne. It's got undulation, sand, and great vegetation. It's interesting, when Mackenzie was here in, in the 20s, he would have passed within a kilometre or two. He went, he went from the sand belt down to Flinders. If he'd known this was here, he'd be kicking himself <laughs> that he went, you know, so close. The sand in the sand belt is incredibly unique from what I understand. Pretty much nowhere else in the world, sand that behaves like our sand, you can get it incredibly firm, but yet grow great grass. Low-lying heathland vegetation and great big trees, and that always creates just a great environment to be around. We're influenced by guys like Mackenzie. At the very birth of kind of Melbourne golf, we had the right person really through, and he just, the influence just, it spread all amongst the sand belt, and it just created this collection of golf courses that's unique only to Melbourne, and some of the best courses in the world. I mean, the great golfing cities of the world are, you know, London and Long Island and New York and, and Melbourne. So I think everyone's quietly hoping that, um, yeah, next time a tournament rolls around to Melbourne that um, it might be a chance here at Peninsula Kingdom. Melbourne and the immediate surrounds that is the Sandbelt is pure golf. From the challenge that is Australia's best in Royal Melbourne to the esteemed history of Yarra Yarra, and now, add to this the rising star of Australian golf, Peninsula. Throw in wine, coffee culture, and world-class culinary options, Melbourne truly is a golfing great. <laughs>